the electric flux through, uh, I have divided it into three uh, parts. One is through the disc and second is through the hemispherical bow and third is the spherical shell. So this uh, topic is based on three parts. So the first part is here, uh, we have to find the relation between the height of the cone and the radius of the base of the cone. If the charge is placed at an apex of the cone here, uh, it is given that the electric flux through the base of the cone, that is through the disc, is 1 by 4 uh, of the flux produced by the charge. That is, phi disc is equal to phi divided by 4, where phi is the flux due to the charge Q, right? So what we have to do, we have to find what is the relation between H and R, that is, the height of the cone and the radius of the base of the cone. So we will use the same concept here. Phi disc is equal to 1 by 4 times total phi. So phi disc is equal to, that is a Q divided by epsilon naught. So then it is a solid angle subtended by the disc. That is 2 pi 1 minus cos of alpha divided by total solid angle. That is 4 pi. It is equal to 1 by 4 Q divided by epsilon naught. Here alpha is the semi-vertex angle, right? Now Q by epsilon naught, Q by epsilon naught, this will cancel here, right? So uh, pi and pi will cancel, this two ones are two twos are, right? So we can write now here, this is a, uh, uh, this is a two. So it is a one minus, now cos of alpha is equal to this four and four will cancel. So it is H divided by under root of, r square plus h square that is cos alpha is equal to this is equal to 1 right so now after uh, doing a little bit of mathematics so what we do we get 1 by 2 is equal to h divided by under root of r square plus h square so uh, after calculations we get 4 h is equal to r square plus h square so this gives us h is equal to r divided by root 3 right so this is the relation between the height of the cone and the radius of the cone when the condition is the flux through the disc is phi divided by 4 that is the flux due to the charge right okay now coming to the next part that is uh, the flux through the hemispherical bowl here the charge is just above the center of the uh, uh, this uh, hemispherical bowl so this is the center of the hemispherical bowl this is center of the base of the hemispherical bowl or top of the hemispherical bowl so it is just above the uh, center of this so that means very close to the center of the base of the hemispherical bowl right we can do it directly here by assuming that since the distance delta r is very small it is negligible so we can imagine the charge to be here so when the charge is at the base so the contribution of charge uh, in this hemispherical ball because to uh, enclose the charge we need another part of the hemispherical ball that is the, sphere, the spherical shell so the contribution of the charge in this is only 1 by 2 so we can write here phi hemispherical bowl is equal to q divided by 2 epsilon naught right or we can do it also by the solid angle method so that is the flux through the hemispherical bowl is equal charge enclosed uh, divided by epsilon naught so, or charge divided by epsilon naught then it is the solid angle subtended divided by 4 pi the solid angle subtended by with the uh, base of the hemispherical bowl right so this as a limiting case so phi h is equal to limit uh, delta r tends to 0, it is q divided by epsilon naught. Now solid angle subtended by the charge with the base of the hemispherical bowl is, it is 2 pi into 1 minus cos of alpha, same as that of disc divided by 4 pi, right? Now pi and pi will cancel, so this is 2 1s are 2 twos are, so it is q divided by epsilon naught. Now as delta r is very small, it tends to 0, so when this delta r tends to 0, this delta r tends to 0, right? So that means now this will uh, come close to this point, so since it is very small, so what will happen to this alpha when uh, the charge is just here, right? So very close to this point, that is center of the uh, this uh, top. So what will happen to this alpha? This alpha will go on increasing, so it will tend to pi by 2, right? 
So when it tends to pi by 2, what we get? It is phi h is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. It is 1 minus cos of pi by 2, right? So we can write then phi h is equal to q divided by 2 epsilon naught. So it is this 2 epsilon naught. So then it is 1 minus cos of pi by 2. So 1 minus cos of pi by 2 is 0. So we get q divided by 2 epsilon naught, right? So hope this is clear. Now we have the third part uh, uh, of this uh, topic that we have calculated the flux through this spherical shell. Now what I have done here, I have taken here uh, a charge distribution that is a ring uh, that is uniformly charged, right? So if it is uniformly charged, now I have taken here another spherical shell. So this spherical shell is drawn in such a way that its periphery passes through the center of the ring or we can say the radius of the spherical shell is equal to radius of the ring, right? So in that case, what we do here, we have to calculate what is the flux through the spherical shell. So I did a little bit construction here. I joined this point with this uh, periphery. I joined this point with this periphery. Since uh, this is equal to R, right? So this is also equal to R. This is also equal to R. So it becomes an equilateral triangle. This is also equilateral triangle. So angle subtended here is pi by three. So this is also pi by three. So then this, we can call this as theta. So theta is equal to pi by three plus pi by three, right? So that is two times pi by three. Now I will see what is the charge enclosed in this spherical shell because not all the charge is inside the spherical shell. Only a portion of the ring is inside the spherical shell. So for that, I will write here the general formula that is phi is equal to q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Now q enclosed is equal the total charge on the ring divided by 2 pi. So I have divided it by the total angle subtended multiplied by the angle uh, that it makes with these two points that is inside the spherical shell. So that is theta, right? So it is q into this is 2 pi divided by 3 then divided by 2 pi. So 2 pi, 2 pi cancel. So it is q divided by 3. So that means charge enclosed in this spherical shell is only q divided by 3, right? So therefore phi is equal to q divided by 3 epsilon naught. So this is the flux through the spherical shell due to the portion of the ring enclosed in it, right? So these are the three parts.